Hello everybody. Welcome back to another video blog. <laughs> it's been a while. We're just walking in the Grampians. Um, it's about three hours away to the west of Melbourne. Um, huge granite mountain range. Very popular for hiking and walking. Um, I don't know any other places that are like it in Victoria. Um, it's kind of on the way out to Adelaide to South Australia. And um, yeah, excuse the huffing and puffing. We're on a, I think this is a 6k hike. How many k's is it, Marianne? Six, six kilometers. Um, it's the Mount Rosea track. So yeah, check back in in a minute. So these are the kind of views you come to the Grampians for. And we're only halfway there to the top. And happy International Women's Day, Marianne, all across the world. It happens to be International Women's Day today, Sunday, the 8th of March. What a better way to celebrate. Hey? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Every year. There's some really lovely rock formations around here. I don't know if you can see. I'll see if I can zoom in a bit. There's another ridge over there. So there's some quite famous walks around the Grampians, the Pinnacle being one of them, which we may get a chance to do. It's just a super busy walk and we've come on a long weekend. So we chose one of the, the tougher, tougher walks that's uh, less done by tourists, I guess. So there'd be less people. Um, but yeah, this Mount Rosea has 360 degree views at the top. So that's a really good one. Um, but obviously you don't get too many of the less uh, fit people or oldies doing it too much because it's rated as difficult. Um, hey. Oh, no, or medium or difficult. Um, but yeah, the Pinnacle's a really good one in the Grampians that looks out over Halls Gap where we're staying. Um, there was an old one as well that I think they closed it. I think you can possibly still go and see it called the Nerve Test. And it's famous, it's quite infamous actually because people obviously used to fall off it. Um, it's a tiny bridge or like precipice that comes out off one of the top of the mountains and you have to kind of shimmy out onto it and it's like thousands of feet high and yeah <laughs> hence they closed it because people are silly um, yeah really really nice place if you're ever in the area come out to the Grampians and do a bit of hiking and relaxing and it won't disappoint <laughs> What do you reckon of this walk? It's cool. It's a cool walk. Any other adjectives that describe it? Challenging. Challenging. <laughs> Serene, beautiful. Look at that little eagle looking thing. I'm going to call that eagle, eagle peak. Officially. Take a photo of you. Go for it. Yet another stunning Grampians view. I think we've currently walked about three kilometers from the car park up to here. I think we're at about a thousand meters elevation. My watch will tell me. 888 meters. And 54 minutes. Distance 3.22 kilometers. And I've burned 537 calories, so that's not many. Oh no, what did that do? Weirdly sounds like the ocean, the wind blowing through these trees up here. Guess I get a, a better show you out here. Well, I picked a silly route anyway. How's that for abuse? I'll uh, do some research and tell you what that lake's called. <laughs> I don't have my usual um, historical overlay narrative in this video that I do in my other videos. But I did come here when I was about, I don't 
don't know, 13 or 12 on a school camp. Went to an Aboriginal um, centre and they taught us all about it, but it was so long ago that I can't remember it. They told us how to, you know, we did the typical ones like learn to play the didge and um, also throw a boomerang and get it to come back. Hit you in the head if you can't catch. Um, but yeah, it's, um, we'll see if we can go and show Marianne that place this weekend because it was really cool. So onwards and upwards to the top of Mount Rosea we go. I keep having to get my camera out because something interesting like a tunnel happens. <laughs> enjoying the serenity and I'm like oh this is exciting I'll have to show everybody wow yeah lucky I've been on a calorie deficit diet lately I fit through there going. have to follow the crevasse. Crevice. There's a trail marker down here. You just keep following those yellow arrows and you end up where you're meant to, ideally. This is a bit of a scary drop here. Oh, I'm a little bit scared of heights. Well, I'm very scared of heights, to be honest. Give me the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> there we go. There's another scary little point that I don't want to walk to the end of, but I'll do it for the sake of the video. scarier watching somebody near the edges than it is being there. Although it's equally scary being there for me. Just speaking in hypocrisies. Not enough oxygen in my brain. Oh, lucky I've got a watch cover on, scratching it up. Obama for your mama. Mary Ann gets lots of compliments on her t-shirt. Just got one from some Americans coming past the other way. No, you're good. Some really cool things along this walk. It's a very cool walk. Mount Rosea, again, yet again, if I haven't said that 300 times. How far are we in now? One hour and 18 minutes. And four Ks. Apparently the loop is um, not here and it's a straight up and back walk, but we met some guys coming down to the car park that said they'd done a loop. Is it worth getting lost in the Grampians National Park on the basis of some tourists saying they'd done a loop? Could be fun. Could also get a ride in a helicopter after a few days, which might be cool. That's exciting. I like helicopters. Saying hello to the local wildlife. Lizard and some poop. Touch, touch, touch the lizard. Go on. <laughs> Must have reached the top up there. We just passed these um, kids. There was about four of them. Yeah. Four kids. And they um walking down on their own. They must have been like 11 or 10 or 12. And one who was about seven. 
and they had a walkie-talkie so their parents are obviously also on this hike somewhere kids wanted to do it themselves so they've got a walkie-talkie and they've been told how to follow the path they had all their like survival gear it's really cool good way to learn how to hike have your parents there and you know do it with them but are separate to them at the same time so so if you can see that 4.6 hour and a half there you go that's how long it takes to get roughly to the top of Mount Rosea at a leisurely pace medium leisurely hey six days six days <laughs> so here we are at the top of Mount Rosea There's a lookout up there. Let's go up. Oh, there's the top. Mount Rosea. So what do we got? Melbourne. 140 miles. Now we're at 21 miles. Melbourne is that way. That way. It's cool. It's not, uh, not difficult. It's that way. It's that ass as he is. Apparently, it's 12 miles to ass as he is. This is our lunch spot. Not too chabois. And we're gonna head down a sneaky way that it tells you not to go down. Um, but it's more interesting that way, it's a bit of a loop. It goes around down there and then turn left, go in between that lake down there and get to the car park. So um, if you don't hear from us, we're, we're down there. <laughs> Somewhere. <laughs> you won't know because this will be stuck on my phone. Yeah, we just finished lunch and we're heading down um, a, a track to an unknown route called the Burrow Huts route, which that Rosea, Mount Rosea is meant to be an up and back kind of route, but we found a track that if you go down this way, follow these arrows, then turn left at some point, we should head back towards the car park. So, if anybody finds my phone, <laughs> that's why. <laughs> I'll be absolutely fine. Um, got the old Garmin, which is no use to me, but keen sense of direction. The wind's blowing a zephyr from the north right now. I did do scouts back in the day. I once learned how to tie a reef knot and got a badge for that. So we'll be right. Are you confident? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Bloody stunning, the Grampians, I have to say. So there's a lot of traditional Aboriginal places around here. Um, there's lots of caves you can find the old rock paintings in. Obviously very, very, very old. I think the white fella got here and I think it was 1800s, 1860 or something, wasn't it? 1840, 
1840. And the traditional name, I can't remember, what was it? Garywald. Garywald is the name of the Grampians um, in traditional language down here. There's an arrow. Um, and yeah, obviously, unfortunately, a lot of the Aboriginal history has been lost, as with many places around Australia, just through, you know, as, as soon as uh, colonisation, white people moved here, um, things changed a whole lot. And the history that was passed on purely through, you know, word of mouth and from person to person, unfortunately, the, that chain broke broke down in a lot of cases uh, so there's yeah there's nowhere near as much indigenous language or culture obviously as there was in the old days uh, they've got dual names here in the grampians for most places so they have it like the the name that was brought on uh, when it was when white people got here and they also have um their traditional names for a lot of places. There you go. There's a little bit of history. I'll do a bit more digging at some point. We're a bit more in the bushy part now. You just got to follow this rock trail. There's um, hasn't been any trail markings for quite a while. Um, but it's pretty obvious which way to go. Thinking about how they actually got all these rocks laid up here, like up a bit further that way. They must have used, I don't know, maybe they used a little dingo digger, but I'd say it was done quite some time ago, and maybe they used donkeys or animals or something like that, because bugger carrying these rocks to where they need to go. They look very heavy. Another change in scenery very quickly. Getting a bit ferny. Heading down, we're heading down towards the river. Um, which feeds into that lake that you can see from the top of Mount Rosea. And at that point we turn left along a road that gets back to the car park that we started in. So, uh, yeah, I think it's nice to do the loop rather than do the up and back track, see a bit more of this park, which is pretty diverse. Haven't seen any snakes yet, if anybody's wondering, which is I like seeing them. Always reminds me. Hey? Oh yeah, so there was a name change. Um, there was a Scottish person who renamed the Grampians, was it? To the Grampians um, when they arrived, which was something, what was it? Something in Scotland. It was a mountain in Scotland, the Grampians, or a range, I don't know, and they use that same name when they got here to rebrand. <laughs> Just missed Marianne, nearly falling over. So uh, there's that lake I was talking about. Still heading down through the forest. <laughs> down towards the road. Um, whoop, must be down, getting down near the river. We're up to, how many k's are we up to? 4k. Um, 7.55. 7.55, nearly three hours, thousand calories. Getting it done. Seeing the Grampians in all its splendor. Look, we made it to a sign. So 3.3k to Rosea Car Park. And we've come 3.6k from the top, so we still got a bit to go, which is good. Half an hour or so. Yeah. Sprinting along. Getting it done. Enjoyable walk. Diverse scenery. It was good we didn't do the straight up and back one and came down through that foresty section. So yeah, we might go and see a waterfall. Um, 
not Mackenzie's Falls, the one that I've seen a bunch of times, but a lesser seen one. Um, after this, it's quite busy down in Halls Gap because it's the long weekend, so we're gonna try and book some, book some dinner and not miss out. Had amazing Indian food last night. Um, what was it called? Yeah, Spirit of Punjab it was called. Um, and yeah, they did like really fresh Indian food. It wasn't like greasy. It was like all kind of made there and then. Nothing like pre-bought or cooked. Like the samosas were made, like they made the pastry and they made everything from scratch kind of thing. Re really reasonably priced and really nice ambient restaurant. Um, it was really, really good Indian food. <laughs> Impressive. Impressive Hall's Gap. Just realised I can see the top where we were. Um, you can see the lookout. I was looking at it a second ago. I've lost it now, but anyway, just up there is um, the top of Mount Rosea where we were. Uh, somebody just cooeyed off the top, so I cooeyed back at them. And then I spotted it. For whatever reason, I can't see it now. Anyway, it's up there. That's Mount Rosea. It's an old creek bed, obviously, in winter. This little waterfall come down here. Lucky it's not, and I don't have to get my feet wet. It be fun the track goes up and over that way. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Fresh. Probably one of those pumas, the black, the black panthers they've got in the hills in the Grampians. There are many reports of cats up here. Cats and UFOs and yowies, according to some suspect sources. You know who you are. Gareth 5000. Bashing through some thick scrub now. Where are we? We're um, probably not much further than last time I told you where we were. 9.85 kilometers. I think we're aiming at about 12 kilometers back to the car park. So we're not far off. Saying at the top of the hill, this would be like a geologist's dream to be in somewhere like this. I don't know what you'd learn from the rocks, but probably a whole lot of history and what's happened and why it's happened would be probably what you'd learn from them. Aren't I clever? Oh, what's this? It's like a waterfall or something. that road. So yeah, this must be a waterfall. There's a car. There you go. Onwards and downwards. There we go. Made it. To a road. Just gonna make our way back to the car park, which is one kilometer. We didn't get lost in the bush. There we go. So bang on. My watch just beeped to say 12 kilometers. So that's three hours 43 minutes. Uh, 1,286 calories, that's like a half a pizza. So if you do a four hour hike, four hours up and down a mountain, you can eat half a pizza, everybody. It's the moral of the story. Don't eat pizza. <laughs> Good hike. So yeah, I recommend, if you're ever in the Grampians, come and do Mount Rosea, it's lovely.
What do you reckon? What's your summary? Yeah, very nice. Very nice. All right. See you later, everybody.